Welcome. In this video, we're going to discuss the answers to the B1 worksheet, as well as some of the questions that may come up in an exam or that may have caused problems. If you have any questions, please ask those in the comments below. And we will also include a complete set of answers if you'd like to go and review them at your own pace. The first important section is the functions of the various different subcellular structures. So you just need to make sure that you know how each of them fit into the larger functioning of the cell. So how does the nucleus, for example, fit in? What does it do? How is it related to some of the other parts that are present in the cell? And then at question number three, you're looking at an application of that. So knowing that because humans aren't able to do photosynthesis, we wouldn't have chloroplasts. So that wouldn't be something that's present in our cells and just being able to apply that type of information when you're asked. Or for example, where would you find more mitochondria and then you talk about the muscle tissues. In terms of differences between plant and bacterial cells, hopefully you're able to find out uh, those differences fairly easily, thinking about the fact that yes, there are some similarities with those cell walls, but also some differences. At question number seven, this is one of the required practicals using a microscope. And they do like to ask you about how those steps or why rather those steps are in the particular order that they are. So think about step one and two. Well, that's giving you space to work and to put your slide in place. Um, later on, once you've got to a higher power objective lens, then you're wanting to make sure that you're using that fine focus adjustment so that you're not risking your uh, lens, your objective lens going through your slide. In terms of the microscope calculations, just make sure that you're able to recognize which formula you need to use. When you've got the image size, real size questions, remember that they're likely going to ask you to do some unit conversion, and you can kind of cheat or shortcut your way through this by directly putting in the multiplier. So 10 to the minus 3 for millimeters, and then 10 to the minus 6 for micrometers. Even though this isn't full standard form with the number 10 being larger than 9.9, your calculator will still understand 10 times 10 to the minus 3 and will be able to do that standard form calculation properly and that saves you that step of having to do that conversion. Just remember that you do need to use that times 10 or that power 10 button on your calculators. So usually it's times 10 to the Y or sometimes it's EXP. Whatever the proper button is, that's the one you need to use. And for entering your negatives, you need to remember that there is a special negatives button that you use on your calculator. So it's not the subtraction button. It's the one that is specifically for entering a negative number. And usually it has just sort of a little minus sign in brackets. When we look at question 14 on these enzyme graphs, remember that you need to be able to explain why the changes that you're seeing in the graphs are occurring. So if you look at the start of the temperature graph, you need to think about how particles are going to be moving faster as you add energy or temperature to them and that increased movement means you will increase the collisions between those particles which will increase the rate of reaction on the other side of that optimum temperature you'll have that denaturing that occurs because the active site of that enzyme has changed shape the bonds that held the active site together are broken the enzyme can't grip its substrate or can't bind with its substrate and therefore it can't function as effectively in terms of looking at enzyme concentration, you know that you reach a point where you use up all the substrate and so therefore you're going to have a straight drop down. There's no substrate to be reacting with the enzyme and therefore the reaction will stop. Enzymes and most proteins are very sensitive to pHs and so you should see this curve having a denaturing on either side of the optimum pH as those chemical changes, those chemical bonds holding the active site could rapidly denature. In terms of substrate concentration, remember that once the active sites are full or saturated, then the reaction rate is no longer able to increase, even if you increase the amount of that substrate. This leads into some application questions later on where you discuss optimum growing conditions for plants, for example, in commercial greenhouses. In terms of the chemical equations, don't forget their proper balancing. So the number six is there are key. And think about why that would relate to the various different structures that they're involved in. 
At question 23, when you look at oxygen consumption running a race, don't forget that there is the presence of oxygen debt. And that is where you're burning the lactic acid that was present. You're burning up that uh, lactic acid that is created in the um, anaerobic respiration. And so you do still have kind of a continued drag in oxygen demand even after the end of the race. So make sure you show that. The experiments for the parts of photosynthesis are often asked as exam questions. So make sure you understand the kind of key points there. So what's being used? How is it proving? Make sure you talk about things like a de-starched plant if the plant needs to be de-starched so that it's really clear to the examiner that you understand how that experiment has to be carried out and why the results that you might obtain from the experiment are valid.